Um, I also wanted to say that is one of my major shticks online. Is being horny? Is being horny, but to a point that I would never, it's not like, oh, I really want to date you. It's yeah. like, I'm obsessing it's over who you are yeah. as a person. What's so strange, and this goes back to manifesting, is that like, it's, we're not even like a degree of separation from any of the people, especially like you, Brittany, the yeah, people that you post about. about. Nah, like, it's you are classically horny enough to where it's like, they could see it and be like, oh, this is like. Playing with fire. You've, mm. It's not. Uh, even when I we did talk, that on the podcast, yes, and then it yeah. was spe- when, yeah. When we talk, it's like not that crazy for this a lister to see this and respond. Yeah, no, or and you were even there. even more so. Someone these a listers have friends that are normal people, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Which Who like are big we, fans of, what and we they're do. like send. It's like very easy. I wish you hadn't said that. Mm-hmm. It's just something I figured out when I when I moved to LA, and like every person I was meeting, I was like, oh, this person was with this person last week like i'm like <laughs> so one degree away and then i was like oh i'm at that person's house that i was talking about that was a degree away that's a it's a matter of time that's i, I feel strange. that way no. there's a rush that comes with it though no, i'm posted about yeah. oh austin butler i need him so bad i need yeah. him i need him i'm available him soon i'm going to run into him well i was talking about on the podcast speaking of manifestation how the only fan fiction i have ever written was a sexual <laughs> fbi <laughs> fantasy about Matthew Gray Goobler from Criminal Minds, and then a week later uh, met him and, and embarrassed myself pretty, pretty, pretty violently. But that is, I mean, if that fan fiction ever comes out, I'm toast. Oh, you're done. Yeah. Is it uploaded anywhere? I can't specify those details. And we actually would not like to comment on that at this time. <laughs> but no, we it is, would. But you'll never find it. I don't okay. think. We would like to say. Welcome back to, to Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines. And that goes without saying, by the way, guys. With Brittany and Sarah. And we're doing a part two to our internet duo uh, from last week's episode with Connor and Brooke. Woo! They are Thanks still Thanks for having here. us back. Mm-hmm. Excited to be back. Yeah. It was, it was a long break. It was. Yes. Um, we've decided to, we, we've all changed, but we decided to change back into our clothes for con- yes. continuity yes. Mm-hmm. purposes. Yes. So we're going to get into like top internet duo examples, like deep dive into like what we feel like makes them work. We were also before this talking about like, you know, being horny online, which we do have an episode on. We probably have a couple. Yeah. Thirst traps and then horny on main. If you guys would like to check it out, mm -hmm. please do. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, it's it's easier to be like a girl horny online. Totally. Because it's less threatening. Female privilege. Yeah. When you... (laughs) When you're when male horny, it's like oh, calm down. You yeah. know, like you, you have... could not be horny the way that we're horny. It would be terrifying. <laughs> but you get way more action, probably, then, arguably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. This it's stuff. really crazy. It's really yes. actually. I can't even talk about <laughs> it. Around. I've signed so many NDAs. <laughs> no, I just like I I can't relate to the going in day after day after day. But people do that. It's pretty crazy. It is female privilege, I <laughs> yeah. will actually say. Because mm-hmm. I can but, post, Austin Butler, what's your address? And the FBI yeah. would be called yes. on me. Yes. But if uh, he was under fucking Kyra Gerber's stuff, like, love, loving you. Yes. Loving you so oh, much. I love you. It would be like, this is sick. And it would be, can you, can you leave women <laughs> yeah, alone? Yeah. And I get it. There's a double standard, but I'm going to benefit from uh, it. Exactly. I will benefit yeah. from that. Someone I'll needs to. I'll ride that train. Yeah. I think Someone yeah. needs to. My personal creed is, I just, like, don't. And so maybe this is a gay thing. I don't like getting specific. Um, so mm-hmm. if I'm going to be horny, it's just like an aura. A general horny. You know, like you it could be uh, anyone. But like it, I feel You've like. You've been horny for some celebrities. <clears throat> uh, yes, but I never. Uh, I don't like to like be like, fuck me or like eat me right. out. Well, that's just disrespectful. Right. Yeah, and I feel like that would be crossing a line. So I just like to be a generally horny presence. Because uh, I feel sure. like the more specific you get is that's when it gets like. Uh, you bother someone or mm. like you put someone like in an uncomfortable position. You have almost an open door policy. <laughs> uh huh. I would butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have office hours that are available. It's like mm-hmm. I've made it clear. Right. And yeah. I'm ready yeah. to receive you. Right. Now I am horny about specific celebrities, but I think Me it's too. different from you in that it's not even sexual. It's like exactly. Yeah, I'm just like rom- like emotionally very horny. I'm no, just don't like, get it twisted. Just, I am horny of for us. Well, yes, I just don't sexually. explicitly say that. Mm-hmm. I'm just like emo- like emotionally. I, I just want you to lay down next to me, and right. I want you. To, I want you. Yeah. How you, that is yeah. very sorry to cut you off, but it yeah. is very um um little little girl of us, right? To be like, would like to love to take you on a date, right? 
hold, hold my hand if you if if you please. Would you like to yeah. lay with me and I will touch your hair? Yeah. And yeah. when all the fan fictions are like just the most sexually explicit right. thing you've ever. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this is like an East versus West Coast situation right now. It is. It is. Do you have to be in love with someone to have sex with them? Brittany does. Um, or do you have to like someone? I think I would have to. I have to like them. Yeah. That's where I don't need that. No yeah. connection. Like you could be like it could fully be just like she need to take care of something. Really, I have to run some errands. Right. With yes. My right. No, there has to body. be emotion. Like, Same. or at least I've had to have built emotion up in my head. <clears throat> Yeah. And it has to be reciprocated in some sense. In some sense. Because if they leave the next morning and never talk to me again, I'm devastated. Game over. I'm, it's locking myself Game away. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I think that is the goal. Yeah. Sort of for me. Is to, to leave. leave? To never talk to them ever wow. again. That's why I enjoy hooking up with couples. Because they have mm, each other. Wow. And they just like, so usually if you hook up with someone. Speaking they, of duos. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of duos. Yeah, but um, no, because like if. Couples, they have each other. If it's not, I don't want to, no open relationships or anything. Well, I mean, it technically is. But I mean, like, um, like if you talk to someone and then they get, like, emotionally invested, mm. is, like, what I'm not trying to achieve. So, like, mm. the couples have each other so you can leave right. and never be seen again. You're a third party. Yeah. yeah. Like a tricycle. That takes a very special skill, yeah. too, I think. I think that's almost like a talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talent. I was say, I developed an accent just now. <laughs> Suddenly from the Midwest it's for no reason. <laughs> Tapioca while I'm at it. But speaking of twosomes, um, so we're going to talk about some top internet duos. Woo! We're starting with Rhett and Link. R and yes, L. Yes, Rhett and Link. Mm -hmm. Classic. I spoke ad nauseum about Rhett and Link on the last episode if you'd like to check that out. Um, but I do want to talk about Smosh because mm -hmm. we didn't really touch mm -hmm. on Smosh. Uh, same era as Fred. Mm -hmm. Same era as Ray William Johnson. Mm -hmm. As... Forgetting um, some of the other ones, Shane Dawson, yeah, Ooh, like old old Shane Dawson. Yeah. That whole era. Jenna where Marbles was that the same time. That was Jenna Jenna Marbles, um, Barrett and Beretta. Do you remember yeah, them? I'm, yeah, Please tell me you do. Like long long time ago. Like yes. I don't even. I just know that the name is ringing a bell, but I can't even picture what I'm. They had a famous skit that was Mother's Day, where they're trying to take a picture for their mom for Mother's Day, and they're in a suit, and they're fighting. They're like brothers fighting, and they're like by a piano. It's probably three minutes long. Changed comedy for me. Can wow. you pull up a picture of that? Like, I'm, I'm Can like... Definitely try. What um, era was like... Never mind. I'm getting off topic, but... But that whole era was... I was in probably sixth grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is that video. So I we're can't. looking up a picture of who? Mm. Yes. You yes. Them? Yes. Yes. Remember yes. Them? Yes. Yes. I don't yes. remember them. No, I'm so. Did involved. anything happen worries. with them? I couldn't tell you. Oh, I could not so tell sad. you. It's so tragic. Yeah, to me. they were they were the genesis of my obsession with internet. Yeah, comedy. because like mm -hmm. it's so disheartening when you see someone that obviously had so much skill and change. Oh, born for at it. least for you, and then they're selling insurance now. No offense to people that sell insurance, mm -hmm. but like it's sad to see someone's skills not have an outlet and then see it mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. die. Or people that have paved the way for us to do what we right. can right, do. Right, 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 right. It's, it's very, um, yeah, I used to love Smosh. And this used to be a way to bond. What a lot of people don't really talk about is that this used to be a way to bond with your friends. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you were in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, finding someone else who, like, was obsessed with YouTube the way mm -hmm. you were, mm -hmm. very cool. Mm -hmm. Very, in, like, soul bonded. So mm -hmm. I think that that is, um, Ian and Anthony definitely were part of that. They're part of the story of OG YouTube. I mean, mm -hmm. from, like, 2005 to probably 2010, mm -hmm. you know, when the Green Brothers were active and all that of like really laying the path for the career of a YouTuber to even be a real possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think that they're very fundamental to this story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, Anthony and Ian, for everyone, they're like YouTubers. They started this company called Smosh. And I would argue they're probably like one of the very like earliest like big YouTube accounts. Yeah. But they did sketches. I think they were friends and like before, obviously, um, that. Right. But uh, what do you think like made them work? Just the fact that they were already friends and they probably bonded over the fact that they enjoy making yeah, people laugh. They were just fucking funny and they were creative and it was stupid. It was that stupid humor, 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, they would do challenges. They would do songs. They would do, uh, oh, I used to love, they would open fan mail. Mm -hmm. Oh, how I was obsessed. And also they were cute. Yeah. And, and people would pick teams. Mm. That's a big thing in, in, well, we see the negative side of it in yeah. duos, but people love to pick sides. Yes. And they love to pit each, us against each no other. Need. And, yeah. hey, that's, don't do that. No that's need. the annoying thing is yeah. where, like, you can't appreciate two people working together. They're like, well, Sarah would be nothing or Brittany would be. It's like, right. shut up. 
Like you're making a weird. Like yeah. you're clearly a duo because you are on the same and side. We're hoping team that this and... is successful. Yeah, yeah. Because we are working yeah. together. It's not like at the end of the semester, one of us has to die. Right, right, right. right. We, we have the Hunger, the hunger Games. Choose which one of us situation. gets fired. Yeah, which in one? the comments. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say that, like, however, those comments can get to people who are, like, unnatural duos. Um, so, like, if they came together, uh, do you know what I mean? So there mm. are um, <clears throat> unnatural duos. Like, so I, you are friends with Ethan Klein. But Ethan Klein and then what was his previous, friend, like, Frenemies, the Trisha, podcast. Trisha, Paytas. I mm. think those yes. comments could easily get to, like, Trisha, probably, and, like, split them up. I think if you're friends, like, you're, if you're a natural duo, I would probably classify this. Then it would just be, like, kind of rude because it's, like, I'm not going to, you know, Go like every time I walk in the kitchen, I'm not gonna be like, oh my god, I'm so much better than Brittany. Like, right. I hope she like, n- you know. It breeds just this unnecessary competition when like, wh- who's winning? Yeah. What is there right. to be There's won? There's no competition. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's more fun when people are rooting for the team. Yeah. 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 With something like frenemies, I feel like that is well. Part of the pull is that they fucking hated each other. Right. Well, or Trisha hated. Did you say even. we're best friends? I mean, I said we're best friends, but you said it first, or else I wouldn't have said that. Yeah, like, that's what are like, we like talking about. That was the beginning and the end, probably. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's it's a whole other pull because people are watching that with the sole intention to just it's like monkeys in a cage. Yeah, like, right. what are they going to do next? Right. Mm-hmm. Versus, oh wow, this these people have a really good comedic banter, mm-hmm. yeah. and I really enjoy it for that aspect. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. There's a big difference between. Um, uh, like reactionary comedy, I guess. Mm-hmm. Of like, what the fuck are they? It's funny because it's abs- Obs- they hate each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's not sustainable. Right. Yeah. And I mean, they kind of proved that they sure did. Yeah. But I would argue, like, their that podcast idea was like very unique in that, like, mm. they probably didn't like each other. And so usually every podcast they are friends. Like, so it's really interesting to like see people like it was like you know enemies to podcasters sort of like <laughs> that know, classic fan- trope. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So th- there's I- influencers to musicians, and then there's enemies to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Do y'all remember that whole era? I mean, it was very recent. Like, took over my For You page during oh, the pandemic. Oh, yes. I, s- I just, like, scrolled past. Yeah? Yeah. Some people chose to be very invested. Some yeah. people were like, I'm sick of seeing this. Right. Regardless, do you guys watch T-Channels? No, what's that? Oh. Do you? Um... I do watch some T channels. I mainly watch the girl who does their ma- her makeup while she talks about yeah, that's talk so shit. So good. Wait, yeah. on, wait, what is it's T channel? Is it like on gossip? YouTube? Yes, it is complete social media gossip, mm-hmm. and that it's T channels on YouTube. It's good. You would be very interested, yeah, it and you would learn like a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it could say be good more. For you. Say more. <laughs> um, these people make so much money talking shit about uh, the shit that influencers do. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. Main characters: James Charles. Uh, yeah. Whenever Tana does something, uh, yeah. okay. it's a lot of that of just like, you'll never guess what Gabby Hanna did this week. Let's uh-huh. get into it. Mm-hmm. And it's, I do watch. I do watch. You tune in. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. I personally love online shopping because it's one of the things I'm good at. I say the only thing I'm good at, but rarely at checkout do I have a promo code ready, you know? So thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing in the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your card. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, not 29,000. 30,000. This is how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I personally love Honey because it's very easy to use. I shop for a lot of makeup and as we all know, they're always on different websites. I mean, sometimes they're like on the same one, but usually they're not, so I have to, but Honey does help me find a lot of coupons for a lot of makeup, and then I end up overcrowding my bathroom drawers. But also, you can add Honey to your iPhone too. Just enable it on Safari, and you can find savings on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. Missing out, it's literally free and it installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash VCG. That's joinhoney.com slash VCG. Are you feeling a little anxious and overwhelmed? I know I am. These feelings can make it hard to shift gears and get in the mood. With Dipsy, you can focus just on what makes you feel good and not anxious and overwhelmed. 
Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters, no matter who you're into or what turns you on. Find stories about that intriguing coworker with a British accent or hooking up with your hot yoga instructor. Hear the sexy voices of Saranus J. Jackson, ER Firemaster, Luke Cook, and many others in stories like you've never heard before. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they offer written stories. It's your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, or heat things up with a partner. Ooh, someone's dating. What I personally love about Dipsy is their sleep stories. I'm a huge fan of ASMR, so when I heard they had a sleep story option, I had to listen, obviously, and it works. It knocks me out like a light. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30 free day trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash VCG. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash VCG. dipsystories.com slash VCG. I'd like to It's a weird, that's a weird human thing that we do is like, so if I, first thing I do in the morning, sh- like, you can sue me. I go to Snapchat and I open the Snapchat Discover page and I know where. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Charlie D'Amelio went to catch last night in New York. That's kind of sick. So is it screenshot? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. That's literally where I get my news, which is really Snapchat. hard to say out loud. I don't know why Snapchat, like involuntarily, that that's the first thing they I open. They make it so easy. There's a lot of pictures. Yeah, I go to sleep kind of early and so I like mm-hmm. have notifications of people that have Snapchat. It's things while I was asleep. Mm-hmm. Sure. And it's more mindless for me than a text that I have to respond to right away. Like I can open the Snapchats that are sent. But right. the Snapchat Discover page, it's really funny because it'll be like, I grew a foot out of my neck. Here's my story. <laughs> right. right next to, we've bombed Russia again. I'm like, okay, let's go through these emotions at 7.42 a.m. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we need to do it. They, s- they know how to get you the t- and reel you in. I mean, those yeah. T-pages, I'm, I'm tuning in. It's usually like old recycled stuff. And I'm like, I already saw this on Tuesday. Right. But mm-hmm. a lot of it's like, oh, I'm learning that Harry Jowsey is now dating Pete Davidson. And you're week. better because of it. Yeah, I am. I'm it's more informed. such a crazy reality to think that that is the cusp of groundbreaking journalism. Snapchat really is. Yeah. Really is. I love screenshotting the, the contrast to how bread, how bread mold took half my family <laughs> right next to Charlie D'Amelio ate at Boa Steakhouse. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ooh, which one should I click? <laughs> Both. Yeah. And you do I'll get to you in a second, Charlie. <laughs> Gotta check out some bread mold real quick. They're both on our international news. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> but then we have this one that I'm kind of scared to talk about because I don't know, like, mm. I know that their relationship goes super deep and it's weird. So Dan and Phil. Mm-hmm. I was never personally into, like, Dan and Phil. Mm-hmm. All I know is that their fans ship them for some reason and then Dan and Phil ask them to not do that. I have mm. never seen such... Feral. Intense, feral, invasive. Wow. And Wait, I, of course, ship know like they them. wanted to, they, yeah. they were writing fan fiction about Dan and Phil? Yeah. Just the and most more so like Louie and Harry kind of. More, that worse. Yes, worse. Wait, can I see Dan and Phil? Yeah. Let's see yeah. if I recognize them. So they're YouTubers, and basically, like. Oh, I, yeah, I do recognize them. People ship them, and it made them, like, uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more to it. I think that this is also something that happens because. Uh, okay. Not speaking specifically of them, I think a lot of audience members are a little bit simple where like they're um, they're like, how are these people together? Or like they're in a relationship. Like, I don't know if anyone's ever shipped you guys. Like it's where they yeah. can't wrap mm-hmm. their mind around like they're s- friends. So if, if they're not related and they're not dating, like wh- uh, what are they? Right. You know? fucking right. each other. Please don't be fucking each other. Right. Oh, my God, please show us pictures, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's if, literally it. Yeah. If they're like friends like this close, like if they're this close, they must be like dating or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really uncomfortable. It's like yeah. anytime I hang out with a lesbian or someone who's gay, there's just a bunch of DMs. It's like, you guys dating? It's like, have do, do whenever you hang out, like, do you date every man that you hang out with? Right. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't know. Well, I try. Yeah. Yes. No, I don't date them. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah. do you do you guys get that? Like, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's honestly for us, it's like fun to play into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, especially like early on, our, oh. our videos together, yeah. when she would fly in, we would make eight videos in a day. I remember. And they'd all get a million views or something in a yeah. day. Could mm. never, could not be me now, but like 
um because people eat it up yeah yeah even if, even if it's that. like totally obviously fake that way mm-hmm. you know but love it it's, well, it's fascinating i think this got pushed to like a point where like people were writing like graphic fan fiction right. yeah. or like asking them about it or like creating all these like things that these guys saw you know yeah. that was like uncomfortable i imagine it's like probably a really funny like you know, we're dating, we're in love, yeah, we're engaged. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, I imagine when it gets to that point, if someone, like, wrote legit fan fiction about you two that, like, went viral mm-hmm. and you had to see it, yeah. and now it made your relationship kind of, like... Your job. Yeah. Exactly. When yeah. when your job is to be professionally funny together yeah. and something like that is unavoidable, mm-hmm. you're doing live shows and there's signs that are just so... You know, like, that sort of stuff. It's, like, that is... It gets to a point, and I feel like with Dan and Phil, I would love to hear the audience's perspective. Yeah, also I feel like they're about to give it. And and you and whether yeah. we ask for it or not, yes. you guys are going to give it. This was such a thing on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, such oh, a thing on wow. Tumblr. That's that scary. I, I always just like scrolled by it because I wasn't. I didn't watch them. I wasn't interested. I was. I was kind of adjacent to that. Mm-hmm. You know, I had my obsessions, and then Dan and Phil was just always there. Mm-hmm. Edits of them in flower crowns mm-hmm. and fucking wow. like, you know whatever. Um, the bathroom Paris sign. Exactly. In yeah. my bathroom. Yeah. Oh, Where did you guys get this picture? So I would love to hear fan perspectives of how involved were you with that whole community? What did they ever publicly say about it? Mm-hmm. Um, what was the fan reaction to if they spoke out about it? I would love to hear. You know, know what I'd be kind of like thinking about lately hmm. with all of, I mean, this specifically just made me think of it and like Jeff Wittick suing David Dobrik right now. Like we don't have an HR department. We don't. You know, and right. it's like, there are boundaries that will get crossed, and we just have to, like, suck it up. And yeah. usually I'm not, like, on HR's side. Mm-hmm. I deal with HR so much at jobs, but I'm just like, oh, oh like, statement. where does, like, where, yeah. what do we do when it gets that? There's nothing to do. Yeah. Like, well, you do just, you think you need someone's consent to write mature fan fiction? About <laughs> them, that's where my head is now. That's a good question. Brooke, because now, well, I'm, now, now I'm getting nervous. Yeah, well, I'm right there right with you. If <laughs> I get sued by Robert Downey Jr., I'm in that with you. I am going Ooh. to, I'm going to be locked up. Yeah, no, well, and we'll be so it's, I have. Gray area. When I reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I wanted to do like this fan fiction episode where I paid three people like different prompts and like tropes to write fan fiction about me. And a lot of the writers on Fiverr wouldn't write about a real person. Mm. It would have to be a character. Like they actually like denied my like payment. So I guess there is. So, okay, if you're a fan fiction writer and you're for hire, do you find some sort of ethical dilemma when it comes to a real person? Because I think a lot of people who like responded to me, their worry was that this person would see it and feel uncomfortable. I mm-hmm. think you found the only three morally stable No, people. dude, I, I reached out to like 15 like Fiverr like mm. fan fiction writers and I think they just live by a creed. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> this is the way. Yeah. Someone wrote There's a real fan honor fiction. system in the fan fiction Fiverr <laughs> community. There is. Someone wrote fan fiction about me and this hot trainer at my gym because yes. I had specifically demanded that someone write fan fiction about that and it got back to him. And I felt... <gasps> So oh, and, and he did approach her on the elliptical. Yeah. I felt oh. I felt so mortified and oh. horrible because it's like you. I'm so sorry you did not ask to be included in this fan fiction. Oh. And I felt like I can't. I I've been. I can't go back to the gym. I need to go run around. I know it me. really, really. He approached me. <laughs> Actually, not 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 only did he approach her, the the person at the front desk. It's, it's s- really a mentioned. Oh, we are now. all big fans here. <laughs> or. Uh, Sorry. It's fine. There's so at, many locations. At, at uh, the gym. Mm-hmm. And we've all read it. Oh. Or we've all li- we've all listened to mm-hmm. Connor read it, actually. It circulated. Well, I'm so stupid that I'm like, oh, nothing will ever get back to anyone, we even always... though I'm broadcasting it on the internet. <laughs> right. We so... all... We're talking about how everything's like one degree of separation, as if the people that are four miles away are not going to have access to this <laughs> podcast. Yeah. You forget that the audience is huge and yeah. it's shareable. Yeah. Basically, what happened was... I had just seen this picture of this trainer you at the gym. I hadn't even him. met him, and I was like, he is really breathtaking. So I was like, can somebody write a fan fiction about me and this trainer? Just, like, thinking nothing of it. And then someone did, and I was like, oh, my God, I wasn't expecting someone to write it. Was and it then good? I made it. was so good. Oh, yeah. it was but it wasn't, like, like, sexual or anything. It was just, like, tension, like, exercising, in, stretching, like whatever. <laughs> yes! And then I made Connor read it on the podcast. <laughs> and then It I was walked, like when like, Brooke thought that she couldn't do one more rep. You didn't tight. Don't say his name. Oh, fuck. Come on. Well, it's out there now. And then um, Sorry, I walked into the gym, and the guy at the front desk was like, love the podcast. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Thought nothing of it. Then I'm walking up the steps. 
I stopped dead in my tracks, <laughs> cold sweat, realizing Chilling. the implications, and then like the next week, the the subject oh, of the fan fiction ch- approached me. You know what? You got to giggle. Yeah, he's a laugh. good sport, but you like know what? horrible. Right. And I would never do. I, didn't, I would not do it again. And you can't go back. No. Female privilege of being horny on men. Totally. But if a the, man if, would he, never write that about a woman. Yeah. Right. Because they don't want like this sensual like tension build up. It would be something graphic probably. Yes. But I would also argue it, a majority of the people who wrote fan fiction about Dan and Phil where he literally had to put out a statement stop doing it yeah. was women. Mm. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the same with Larry Stylinson. Yeah, I was just going to say it happened to Harry and Louie, too. Like, yeah. ruined their relationship. Yeah. Because it why, just gets so... Why would women who were in love, who are in love probably with these people mm-hmm. and attracted to them want to imagine them together? A great idea. A great question. That is a good point you bring up. Well, here's the thing. So, like, a lot of times... This is a similar vein. So, a lot of times why people like to watch like gay male porn as opposed to lesbian porn is because we're like lesbians specifically like you don't believe like attraction between like two women but like you believe like attraction between like two men you know what i mean like that's why um so like lesbian porn is obviously not made for like lesbians it's made for like straight people and like in a similar way like so when Mm. you ship like two men like together like you believe that they're like this do you understand what i'm trying to say yeah where it's more um because i feel historically lesbian porn or lesbianism mm-hmm. has been for the male gaze. Yeah, and so a lot of the people who are writing fan... I'm not saying that everyone who writes fan fiction no. is gaze, a straight girl. Like, uh, it's not the yeah. male gaze. Like, yeah, no, G-A-Z. I'm losing everybody. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying like a lot of like um, like sapphics will write like fan fictions that don't necessarily blow up because it's a, a less of a community. However, mm-hmm. like fangirls are like such a huge thing for like guys. Mm-hmm. So often they'll push two people together and like... Everyone's like heavily invested in that. There's a weird with the Larry fan yeah. of like it's a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it's like they they think they're right and mm. they will die on that hill. And it's that thing too. And I feel like it was the same thing with Dan and Phil of like, I know I'm right. You guys just watch, just watch. And it's like obviously not fucking true at all and they're delusional. Mm-hmm. And then they have to come out and make a statement. You are making us uncomfortable. We're actually going to stop filming together because you're making us so uncomfortable. Oof, and this so fan yeah. base is like absolutely insufferable. It's like, do you not realize that that's what you're doing? Yeah. It's a level of delusion. I also that think, yeah, yeah, that I'm just putting myself in the shoes of like a Larry shipper, which I was not, or like oh, a, Dan yeah. and, a Dan and Phil shipper it can be really hard to come to terms with the fact that you are not going to end up with one of these men right and so i think it might make it easier to just assume that they're gay and they're going to end up together right because that just makes it easier they're not going to end up with you anyway so that just i was gonna say like it's it's super weird to think about that and then like when they do start dating you know these guys like at least for one direction started dating women and Girls were devastated. And girls right. were sending right. them death threats. Yes. Yeah. Versus Can you I wouldn't send a member of yeah, the band yeah. a death threat. Right, exactly. Yeah. You wouldn't send what? A member of the band a death threat. Yeah. Because you, you would love just them. send their girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and right. I, yeah, I think it's just easier to see. Well, then also, together. like, I think, like, it's also crazy to think about, like, there's probably a lot of Taylor Swift fan fiction, but you guys wouldn't write that. Right. Because you right. don't fantasize about it. So there's more fan fiction about men because, like, that's who people fantasize about. Mm. So mm. if there is, like, Taylor Swift mm-hmm. fan fiction, is probably written by you. Me. <laughs> Taylor, hey. You know what the flip side of it, though, is, too? Like, Rhett and Link have read fan fiction on the show. Mm-hmm. So you embrace it and you make fun of it, or you say, thanks for thinking of us. Mm-hmm. Or you take the dramatic, you know, uh, apocalyptic approach of, like, we are so yeah. offended and mm-hmm. whatever. I think it's all a matter of are you ready and willing to lose the fan base that is writing that about right. you? It's mm-hmm. very, very strange. I would, again, love to hear it's uh, hard personal to, Dan and Phil stories. It's hard to acknowledge things like that that make you uncomfortable and try to make a joke out of it because it kind of is like, yeah. then it opens up Enables that, it. that part of the internet that's the besties, hate besties, and then insult. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no. Like, yeah. I'm like, we opened up this conversation about X. Say my eyebrows, which I'm totally coming to, I've come to terms with, but like, it's kind of like here. I'll, I'll, it's like when you make fun of your sibling and then someone else chimes exactly. in and you're like, what the fuck did you just say? Like, it's only cool That's if exactly I say it. it. Yeah. So, yeah. like, when I open something up and then everyone's like, oh, we can all comment on this now and making fun. It's like, no, mm-hmm. stop. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. that. There's like this TikTok audio where it's like, um, I don't know, like I'll post like an old picture of myself and then everyone's like, you look like you would have been a bitch to me in like college. It's like, that's still me. Yes. I'd be a bitch right. to you right now. Right. You know? <laughs> But it's like it's like a weird thing. Also, this is an attack on to like Dan and Phil. So they've been around forever, but they both came out as gay in 2019. So what uh, also could have made them wildly uncomfortable is the fact right. that people are oh, suggesting yeah. that they're gay yep. and they're coming to terms I'm with sure their sexuality. That's a layer. And to be like forced to do it so publicly because you are so huge uh-huh. is like something that may. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but yes. Wait. Um. What was that thing? Uh, if you were talking about. Just like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have eaten the mint on camera. Now it's all over the place. You committed. You gotta just yeah. I know. swallow it whole. Par- it's part of. It's so sharp right now. It's actually poking my that thing. Brain. In yeah. You feel that? Um, I think I might start bleeding here, but just acknowledging something uh-huh. opens up the space for people to keep right. talking about it. And it's like exactly. It's almost easier to just ignore it until it stops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then you also get that thing of like, has anyone ever told you that you look like this? And it's like the most, everyone thinks they have the most profound comment like every single time. I know that you get like the yellow M&M. Like, and you've acknowledged it, but like, and then, but you've acknowledged it, but even like a year later, people be like, has anyone ever said it? It's like, yes, dip shit, sorry. Yes, dip shit. Like people have said that. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mm-hmm. also hate that we talk about this a lot. You'll like make, f- I'll make fun of something about myself and then everyone else. Yeah. You that cannot, they, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's on the invitation. Sibling. It's like, no, yeah. you, mm-hmm. I get to do this as a bit. Yeah. It's not. It's not an open door for you to come in and chime in. I Do not mean, chime in. Yeah, all comedians deal with that, though. Right. I mean, I know it's about being strong. And the I'm great not thing strong. about I've never claimed to be strong. Skinned. I'm not. Yeah. No. The great thing about like being an online presence is that you can create this safe space for people. But Connor was saying this morning we were talking about a comment I got that really pissed me off, and Connor was saying like, it's a safe space, but it's it's not that safe. I say, you know? yeah. I've like, always said my comments are not a safe space. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not saying this is funny, if you're not saying something objectively positive you're blocked yeah. i'm so trigger happy with blocking people because if it's you lose privileges mm-hmm. i've yeah. had uh, you, you've lost privileges you're banned. Mm-hmm. and i've had people make second accounts or have yeah. their friends even please unblock me i was like i don't remember why i blocked your friend or you it's for a good reason but mm-hmm. i don't no you're not welcome back into my home yeah and I, also yeah. no that's it <laughs> I don't block people. I make public examples. Of yes, them. that's smart. I used to do that, and then send the dogs. I used to just respond oh, so to insults in video form, and that right. was like my brand for a while. But then people kept like sending me hate comments in the hopes that I would respond exactly. to them, and they it became too much. Like I was like, this is actually my favorite me thing is like, yes, I'm commenting on this because I'm blocking you, but I'm giving it ten minutes for other people to see this, yeah. so they know that I'm blocking you. Yeah. They'll be like, this sucks. You've done better. Like, your content lately sucks. I'm like, really? Do you <sighs> really think that? And they're like, oh, my God, King, you responded. I didn't think yeah. you should. No, breathe. But you know <laughs> what I'm going to say. Yeah. I can't say what I was going to say on. Yeah. yeah. It's hard because it's like these people just love you so much. They think you're besties and they right. think they can neg you and, you know, say this and that just getting a response out of you, even if it's a negative response, is a win in their book because mm-hmm. you acknowledge them. Mm-hmm. That is not actually how it works. Mm. And you will get blocked and yeah. we will make a public example out of you. And D- it's very yeah. unfortunate. Dude, I honestly would prefer outright homophobia than someone who thinks that we're best friends mm-hmm. yeah. and like uses an insecurity as like a punchline and a joke or like oversteps. Like, so I have a mustache that I shave. And so, like, if I, also you have to remember in a comment section, all context is removed. I don't know mm-hmm. what tone you're using. I don't know yes. if you've been following me. Mm-hmm. So, if you're like, um, love your makeup and your mustache, that may be something. If Brittany commented that, I would understand the context of how she's saying that. But I don't know who you are, and that really like hurts my feelings. I don't yeah. care if you like me. Yeah. I would much rather you call me a slur than like pretend like we're besties. <laughs> you and, like it and pin it. And yeah, yeah and then tear me down you right. know what i mean right, right. i got 100 percent. we were just talking over lunch by the way i got drunk the other night and someone tweeted that my tweet was not funny i was like it would be absolutely hilarious though if you went missing randomly <laughs> oh and i was like God. maybe a little harsh <laughs> at 2 48 a.m <laughs> but i stand i have to stand by it what am i gonna do back up and be like my bad that was harsh yes. don't get my I, it's not a safe space yeah watch yourself fuck around and find out uh, fuck around but, now, i'm gonna tweet your address yeah, at you <laughs> i'm gonna dox you um it, sorry and Brooke and I were talking like I have found out insecurities from TikTok oh mm-hmm. we talk about this all the time yeah things I didn't know I should be embarrassed by. yeah what are you I'm... I know I've gotten so many things on my body fixed <laughs> since oh. TikTok 
Yeah, we get a lot of, um, you're so brave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just look like this man. Yeah. I don't yep. know what you mean by that. Yep. Oh, yeah, this is like something similar. Like, um, so we're comedians, like Brittany and I, and as both of you are as well. So, like, there's the body Thank positivity you. movement is like for people who are plus size. And Brittany and I do not claim to be like, aesthetic based influencers so we'll sometimes post content where like our body is in it right. and someone will comment i love seeing my body type represented oh shut the fuck you up you do that's this is not the time nor the place because we are not like fitness influencers influencers models any people who like yeah. like you are just looking at us and applying sort of like you're considering our entire being at once because you wouldn't do this to a male comedy influencer yeah. you wouldn't like say like i love that you're normalizing because you cannot separate the comedy from the body when it comes to someone feminine you have to consider you have to you appraise have to. it all at once Let's yes i this is what i was bitching to connor about this morning and i feel bad that it <laughs> upset me so much because the comment itself like wasn't meant to be offensive right but i just like have always struggled with my body never know like just don't know how to describe my body not sure whatever and i was like showing off my new sweater vest and someone was like love this like love to love you like fellow mid-sized queen and i was like Oh, it's not a bad thing to be a mid-sized queen right. at all. I don't know how I would categorize my body. I struggle with that, you know. And it sucks that I, someone does it for you. It's it like it just felt like so awful, and I didn't. I wanted to say something, but I didn't know. You don't want to open. I didn't want to open the gate. I didn't know what to say it's because not it's worth not. The time. It's not technically an insult, but like one, this video was not about my body. Right. Like mm -hmm. right. two, like I'm so happy that you're happy with your body. And I'm happy if I could help you somehow be happy with your body. Keep that to yourself. But keep it to, your, <laughs> keep it to yourself. Yeah. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. Because it's, I don't know. But I was like, I've been so like rate, like it's, upset about that comment. Yeah. And, and she I didn't mean anything by it. That's the thing is they don't mean to insult you. No. Versus I feel like with, for example, Cody and Noel, you know, like being short. Right. Oh, they just go in on right. them for mm -hmm. being short king, short king, da 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 Looking tall today, King. Right. It's just like, you know, it's like. Grandpa. They, yeah. They can do it to themselves, but yeah. you can't. Right. They mm. get it, but it's different than mm -hmm. how women get it. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Um, I would like to change the subject. Okay. Because okay, yeah. we're just <laughs> bitching. Sorry. Did you know that in the last year, rates of anxiety and depression have doubled in the U.S.? These days, it can take weeks to get a traditional therapy appointment. And that's why I'd like to talk about Cerebral. Cerebral is an online mental health service that offers prescription medication, counseling, and therapy for anxiety, depression, ADHD, insomnia, and more. And I have all of those. And I have been using Cerebral for the past couple of years. Uh, recently, I've been working on my anxiety and abandonment issues and feeling like I am enough. And Cerebral has honestly helped me feel like I am enough and really internalize that message. Cerebral is one of the few services that provides prescription medication online through a licensed provider and ships medication straight to your door. Skip the pharmacy lines. With the Cerebral mobile app, it's like having your personal care team wherever you are. You can message your care team and access self-care resources wherever you are. Connect with your counselor and therapist on your own schedule through your laptop or the Cerebral mobile app. You can schedule sessions based on what's most convenient for you, and you don't have to wait weeks to be seen. You can do your sessions on a laptop or a phone, so you can always find an area at home where you feel most comfortable. They also offer affordable treatments that are one-third the price of traditional therapy. Treatment options are available with or without insurance. Cerebral is in network for several insurers and they're working every day to grow their partnerships. Even if you're out of network, they'll provide you with the necessary paperwork so you can easily submit a claim. And for listeners of this program, you can receive 65% off your first month of medication management and care counseling at cerebral.com slash VCG. Go to cerebral.com slash VCG for 65% off your first month. That's just a total of $30 to get started. Join Cerebral today on their mission to make quality mental health care accessible and affordable for all. Hey guys, I'm not gonna lie. I do get bored a lot of the times and I wish I had a game that I could play that could give me like a instant dose of serotonin because life's too short for a day without fun. Am I right? Get a thrill whenever you need it with Slotomania, the world's number one free slots game. You'll have endless excitement at your fingertips with 170 free-to-play slot games, huge jackpots, an interactive community, and a million free coins. It's the perfect escape from your daily routine. I personally love Slotomania because I am simple, and I don't know how to play video games, but I still want to play. And it's very easy to play, and there's graphics that keep my attention because I am a child. With Slotomania, you get one million free coins when you download to kickstart the fun. There's nothing more exhilarating than 
in huge jackpots, special prizes, and free coin rewards every day. Slotomania makes every day fantastic with engaging graphics and realistic sound effects. With added perks like free spins and free coins, there's always something unexpected waiting. When your day is feeling stale, just ask, what will today spin? If you're 21 or older, you can join millions of players around the world. Download Slotomania, the number one free slots game, on the App Store or Google Play Store and get 1 million free coins. That's Slotomania on the App Store or Google Play Store for 1 million free coins. Okay, um, so we're going to move on to some... Can young we move on to Jenna and Julian, Okay, yes. Please? We're going to move on to Jenna and Julian. Jenna Marbles. We miss you. Yes. So much. We hung out with her at a bowling alley one time. Super That's nice. Awesome. Very She's nice. a legend. Brendan Urie was there. Couldn't Whoa. tell you why. Yeah. Could not tell what you why. What bowling alley? Uh, it was for our friend. He's still there. <laughs> he works there. <laughs> legend actually, has it. <laughs> yeah. He lives under, under the... He's, he's got giving a, out the shoes, yeah. yeah. He's got a residency mm -hmm. there at the He bowling actually, alley. they turned him into the shoes. He's got tenure at a bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> he's been there so long, they can't get rid of him. I don't know he, why They got rid of the there. Zoltar machine, and it's just <laughs> Brendan <laughs> Urie reading out tarot cards. Um, tarot. Yeah, we met Jen, the f coolest. It's like one of those people, like, you meet your idol, and they're just yeah. like you imagine. Oh, that's that's awesome best feeling. to hear. It is. I don't have enough compliments or praises for Jenna. I mean, truly. Mm -hmm. Um... In the beginning, was and the we all word. remember. Sorry. There was. <laughs> was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So you know, sorry. True. That is so God. Whatever. You keep going. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to. Now on our religious trauma segment. Yeah. The Dolan and twins. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Keep going. Speaking of duos. Sorry. In the beginning, Jenna right. made random videos with her dog, Mr. Marbles, and documented her work in the nightlife industry. She continued to post sporadically until her viral hit, How to Trick People into Thinking You're Good Looking. After that, she started to post every Wednesday slash Thursday. In late 2012, her and her ex broke up. A short while later, Jenna introduced fans to her new boyfriend, Julian Solomita. Mm -hmm. Jenna's fans were initially very cold and dismissive towards Julian, especially when he started appearing in her videos. But after showing his Aries energy, people started to warm up to him very quickly. It's actually really strange that they warmed up to an Aries man. After... Uh, he is the spokesperson for Aries men now. It's interesting. Now, Julian often appears in Jenna's videos and helps her shoot them as well. This is a dated article that Stanley put in here, R.I.P. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I feel like people have such a positive nostalgia for Jenna, mm -hmm. separate from any other creator I can mm -hmm. name. Did she? So she started on YouTube. Yeah, I thought she was Vine as well. No. Oh no, no? she's like 2005, like 2006. Wow. Early YouTube. Crazy. You want to know some bullshit? Yeah. yeah. Worked for Barstool. Jenna. Yeah. Jenna did. Yeah. Wow. Well, Way like I didn't. Back when was there a time Bar back in the day where Barstool wasn't what it is? now well i could talk ad nauseum about barstool okay. um, that could be an episode it could be honestly just the misogyny of mm -hmm. barstool yeah but um she w did something i can't even tell you what she did um and they still to this day use her as a selling point wow mm -hmm. uh, which is ick yeah and, and you know barstool has been around for more than two years i didn't know honestly. that either no barstool sports has been around for i mean you followed barstool ut barstool i was thinking yeah i guess i was thinking like tfm was just like funny videos of drunk people and that's what i followed it for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now it's a successful media company so i i guess she was what was she doing? I couldn't tell you. Way back when. Did you Google it? Uh, yeah, I'm looking it up. Um, she what was, could she have been doing? She was content? David. Wait, is David the main guy? <gasps> she was Dave David Port. Port his, his assistant. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. Wow. She's lived a couple lives. She has. She could probably do a t I bet she, sh she should have done a tell-all with that. That, that is. She I don't think really that she would have wanted. She didn't internet. probably want to open that can of beans. Yeah. No, not at all. The audience are so like different. Yeah. yeah. They... I have this whole, I don't have any affiliation with Barstool actually, so I'm going to say this. Um, they tried to buy me by, to do a, like to own me the way they own like Ellie Schnitt or, you know, people like, or, uh, wow. what was the one, Alex and what was her name? I'm not sure. Alex you know and Alex Cooper? Yeah, that show. Oh yeah, Sophia. Call Alex and Sophia. That whole thing where they like owned it, they owned all the IP. Yeah. Right after the kombucha meme happened and I was posting other videos, they called me in and they offered me a bunch of money, which at the time was not a bunch of money, but to uh -huh. me, I'm like, that's the most money I've ever <laughs> right. seen in my whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, almost did it. And I'm so grateful I didn't wow. because, because you have imagined if How that long would they have, have owned you for? Uh, indefinitely, probably. It was two, three years. Wow. I don't know how the contracts work. They're different for each person. And that's what makes it work is mm -hmm. they just use and abuse their creators. Well, you, you get their following. I know, but then like it would be hard. Men as my it would be hard to get out of that. Yeah, yeah. I think. Like What's if you wanted branding? to, if you wanted to branch out, like 
you would lose a lot of that, yeah, I think, sure. once you leave. And so that was, I remember like sitting in this office and they were like, you know, the CEO is a woman. And we're doing all the because I was like, I have a real problem, I think, actually, with the culture of your company because it's sports and Good titties. For you. And I was like, I don't know if I really if that's the best match for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Where 90 percent of my audience is like the gays. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you know, the CEO is a woman. We're doing all these internal changes and da, da, da. And it was kind of convincing, but kind of not. And the big thing where I was like, oh, wow, was well, Jenna. They use her as a selling point. And I think that I mean, I don't want to speak for her, but like the type of person Jenna is today and Mm -hmm. all the incredible things she's done and and her attitude on life and her worldview I don't think aligns with Barstool at all Mm -hmm. and it is unfortunate and I wonder I wonder and I wonder if y'all think this too at any of your ex-jobs if they use you as you know I used to work here did any of I know that they did I'm sorry no 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 tell me what job like says that you used to work there you don't have to say the company I can't yeah, don't. legally, but yes. Well, they I've, say Fibula used to work here for sure, uh, and it's been years now. But I like, there's no doubt in my mind. Wow. Yeah, because I was very much associated with the company at the time. Wild. Mm. I was a preschool teacher, so I bet they're like hiding that information. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Keeping that in. Yeah. Uh, I don't hidden. think that they're advertising that by any means. Interesting. <laughs> Do you miss it ever? I miss the kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the other day, I was on a plane sitting next to this boy who was six-year-old who was playing Minecraft and I was like can you show me what you're doing <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> and he was like please leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> I was like so what's gonna happen if you drag that over there wow tell me more <laughs> can't just talk to kids so on I, planes no, I know I know <laughs> so I do miss kids but I don't miss anything else Fair. Brooks on the no-fly list <laughs> <laughs> Can't sit next to kids, Liz. <laughs> I think at my last job, I've talked so much shit and how they fired me illegally that yeah. I don't think they'd like to be associated with fair. me. Fair, fair, but, fair. But um, in our last episode, or recently, we were talking about HR, like it's a huge part of our yeah. lives. Mm-hmm. I've told this story before, but I love it. They actually made an HR for me at my first job oh, because wow. <laughs> my manager was turning 30. So I found a bunch of news articles pe- of people who died when they were 30. And I, c- <laughs> I cut them all out and I sent them to them because I was like, look, but... The thing is, it was like none of the people who died died of natural causes. So right. it was like you could die at any moment. Right. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. So then they made an HR department for me. Because of right. that? Yeah, they thought I was threatening the manager. I was like, no, I was saying anyone can die at any uh-huh. moment. You count your fucking days. These, Happy 30th. Did, yeah. the man- <laughs> did the manager appreciate it or not really? No. No. Is this a man? Ooh. Yeah. Fuck okay. him. Take a joke. Mm-hmm. It's a joke. Your worth doesn't expire Objectively, at 30. very funny. Yeah. Well done. Objectively, yeah. I did Very Google. funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very funny, mm-hmm. yeah. I know my way around HR very well. <laughs> Again, an ominous statement coming mm-hmm. from a man. Wait, what's something that you've gotten in trouble for? I've never gotten in trouble. Oh. Well, I did get fired. But <laughs> yeah. it wasn't, it was n- we can offline. I legally don't think I can I would like to disclose. discuss with you after that part. I think there's, there's an N, there's a D, and there's an A involved in... Oh yeah, I yeah. know them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I my first job, I know they probably use me for yeah because it's one of those things. You know, Salesforce. Have you ever had to use Salesforce? Yeah, yeah. I never understood how to use it after I was hey, trained and trained and trained. Me too. Mm-hmm. Nine, ten months of using it, couldn't tell you a single thing. But should be pretty simple. I'm right. sorry. On these certain, it's called cases, like casework in Salesforce. Your name is attached to it indefinitely. Yeah. So it'll mm-hmm. say Brittany Tomlinson inactive. Yeah. My last name, by the way. Yeah. Um, and so to this day, I mean, if you pull up a customer's policy and I worked on it at some point, my name is still there. Wow. I know that they use that. Yeah, for mm-hmm. a fact. It's it's so scary to think about because that's your that feels like such an intimate part of your life before all the internet bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, like that mm-hmm. was who I was as a twenty one year old working at this job fresh out of college feels very vulnerable and very I didn't know what I was doing, like <laughs> out of my gourd, as yeah. you would say. And now to look like who I am today and look back is a strange thing, especially very like strange. that you could be judged for who you were back then. It's mm-hmm. just very odd. But um, yeah, I think about it all the time. Anyway, back to Jenna. <laughs> so I think why Jenna and Julian work is because you can tell that they genuinely love each other. Yeah. I mean, Jenna already came with like a massive audience, but you can tell like how Julian is just like totally head over heels for mm-hmm. Jenna. And I think that people really love seeing that. I mean, because men can be shitty. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to see, like, one that's, like, just obsessed with their girlfriend. Right. And I think that that's, like, a, a fan fiction trope that everyone, or, like, a trope that people like is when the guy is just obsessed with his, sure. you know, wife. I love like, that. Um, what's yeah. the Adams that. Family? I need it. Like, Morticia. 
And, and Gomez. Yes. Yeah, you know, like people love that dynamic. Yeah. So I think that's why they work. And also they're just genuinely entertaining. And Jenna goes above and beyond. I think of the most outlandish like shit to yes. film. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about committing to the bit. Mm-hmm. Jenna Marbles. Yeah. But is she inactive now? Yes. She'll sometimes appear on, um, well, they just got engaged. Wow. Yeah. So she'll sometimes appear on his streams or things like that. We'll see her in the background. So but she he's does not. still wow. active. Yes. And she's retired, essentially? Yeah. Ju- uh, Julian streams and uh, does merch drops. And he just did a, a nail polish collab with mm-hmm. Hollow Taco. He's slaying, honestly. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. He's doing great. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I really. We and they've broken Jenna. up. No, they're still together. No, they oh, just okay. got engaged. They're just got engaged. Oh, I'm so sorry. So if you would you listen to me when I yeah. talk, it'd be well, really sick. You said, you said <laughs> oh, oh, this is obviously man. a dated article, RIP. Oh, because she was posting. Because she was yeah. still posting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see, I see, I see. That there, was almost three years yeah. ago now? Two years ago. Two. There is a duo I'd like to move on to, because yeah, I know that yeah. our audience says them, Trixie mm-hmm. and Katya. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Trixie, okay, yeah. let me just answer this question once and for all. Like, once and for all. Trixie and Katya are also signed to Studio 71. So whenever you guys comment, are you guys sharing the same studio as Trixie? Yes, yes we are. Yes, we, we are did. signed to the same podcast network, but yes. And I think we're very much a Trixie and Katya dynamic. Yes. In that, like, you're, like, a singer and you're, like, colorful and it, uh, nice to be around. And I smoke. Thanks. And I'm, like, <laughs> Russian. weirdly, mi- like, yeah, like, from Russia That's or something. vodka. Mm, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. drunk right now. No, but, yeah, I think it's, um, I think they work because they're such high contrast. Yes. You know, like, they're complementary colors. Um, do you guys watch Trixie and Katya? I have no, started I because of Brittany. I've seen. Oh. No. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen a ton of their stuff together, but I've seen, like, obviously a lot of Trixie stuff from them. Yeah, they're, um, Trixie's such a superstar. And I've been following the designer that does, that that's doing the Trixie Motel. Danny? Danny, for the Slay. longest time. I can't remember why, but I, I love that Cute. stuff, and it's it's cool. And then I, then I started seeing Trixie a few years stuff, and yeah. now I've seen a lot of Trixie Danny stuff. You want to talk cool. about thick skin, being a drag queen, bitch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. All that makeup. All that it's a thick layer, actually, yeah, yeah. physically thick. Yeah, um, I think that Trixie and Katya, again, paved the way for a lot of do. I, I would argue for you yeah. and me. That's how we met them. Yeah, is on my YouTube channel. We did a Trixie and Katya makeup. We tried their makeup. Oh, that's mm-hmm. so funny. And we posted it on Twitter, and both of them reached out and said, yeah. "This is god awful. Would you like to make a video?" And mm-hmm. we said, "Yeah, probably." Yeah, turned out uh, we're neighbors with Trixie. So fun. Wow. Mm. That's hilarious. The, success story. the internet is wild. It is manifestation. Wild. Mm-hmm. But it some uh, background for everyone at home. Trixie and Katya are two drag queens who met on the filming of Drag Race season seven. Their friendship, they weren't really like friends on Drag Race. No, they didn't um, really interact with each other a lot on Drag Race. Yeah, I think they were paired together through Wow Presents, which is like the Drag Race like YouTube channel on fashion photo review. Um, and they both like... It's basically a series where you like talk about people's outfits and give like a yay or nay sort of situation. Toot or boot. Yeah, and their opinions were so like funny together that they were like, "Wow, I was like, do you want to make a series?" So they came up with something called "Uh." It's the, one of the most art like. How do you spell that? U N H H H H. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, you got it. Nice. And it says it's arguably the most watched show on the Wow Presents Plus streaming platform. Nice. And it propelled them to like everything that they are today, besides Drag Race, obviously. Mm-hmm. And they have like their own Vice Land series, the Trixie and Katya show, the Netflix web series. I like to watch. I have a question mm-hmm. for y'all too. Mm-hmm. Where do you see? Are, do you want to do live shows eventually? Do you want to keep it as a pod? What's the goal? What's the dream? I personally have horrible stage fright. Me fair. too. So. Yeah, fair. Ideally, I would maybe do one eventually, but I don't know how I'm going to get myself up on that stage. Do you um, have Ativan? Mm hmm. It just puts me to sleep. Um, well, when you're super, well, yeah, because you don't need it if you're not nervous. Um, so when you're super nervous on stage, yeah. take it and you'll be fine. I feel like I've done that, like because I used to get really nervous when I would give presentations yeah. in school. So I would take it <laughs> and then like could not open my eyes to do the presentation. Mm. Okay, so maybe it, you'll do I've Adderall? tried Clonopin. No, I've never done that at all. Maybe you should try a yeah. combination of the two. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm it's scared. worth it's worth looking into more drugs yeah. for me in the future. <laughs> yes. Personally. We can talk after. Yeah. Connor's going to talk about why he got fired, and I'll be like, meet me in the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, what's in your backpack, Sarah? <laughs> okay, <Nelly. laughs> all right. Um, I am fired up, and mm-hmm. I will go on any stage ever in front of I don't mm-hmm. care how many Same. people. We've talked Same. about me, like, FaceTiming into the Love that. Live Loving show. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we were actually – can I tell that story? Brooke and I have had the conversation about potentially in the future maybe doing live 
shows and um it brought you to tears i've burst into tears every time yeah just thinking about the yeah prospect. i just like i also think if it were to ever happen with tmg which is the podcast studio that um we are a part of i'm nervous that like the fans of cody and noel would not like, because we've gotten comments from them before that are like, we just want Cody and Noel, like, get this shit off well, our channel. Okay, well, they so th I'm you, specifically so. worried about them. Like, we've watching. We were new enough. And so we yeah. started since since we started with TMG. It was jarring for a lot of T Cody and Noel fans to just be like, wait, Who it's not just going to be TMG sure. on this channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they so, give you a segue or an intro at all? Nope. So well, we, well, went, I mean, on we went on their show, but we had already had a, we had, <laughs> we we had already had a few episodes come out when we went on their show to introduce ourselves, okay. and so it took a little bit of like figuring, like hitting our stride and stop trying to prove ourselves that we right. were worthy of being there. Mm -hmm. And when we started doing that, which was very like fairly recently, mm -hmm. it's people coming and being like, I don't even want to say this, but like I've I've kind of converted now, and I'm like here for. Your podcast, hey, and then I'll win. I'll do Cody Noel after I'll do, which like I'm sh they're no. stoked also for us because we right. are their project, right. you know, at the end of the day, and we've we ha have now built this new thing, mm -hmm. which is cool because it. it wasn't there a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we didn't we didn't, and that was when we had that first conversation, which I think that which, we're oh, in a I much was, better place yeah. to be on a I, stage now maybe. with an audience. I don't know. <laughs> Pro uh, for we'll yourself. See. <laughs> yeah, I'm also the only woman in the whole. Like out of the talent, lots there, writing on which that. Which is just like there is, there does feel like a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. For me, but we'll see. But I'll, you're also the only funny woman, because it's only you. Yes, thank you, Connor. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Anytime I can be of assistance. But I think that this is a similar way to like how it says, um, like Jenna, like Julian. Everyone was like hesitant towards like Julian because like, and that's how they were with you guys. Mm -hmm. There's like this vetting yeah. process when someone is so established. Right. They almost like want to make sure that the person or the people coming in are like worthy of this person's time or like right. trustworthy. You know, and I'm not saying you guys are like untrustworthy. It's just like the audience. I feel like are so skeptical, like skeptical and like. Um, defensive mm. or like very protective of the creator. When the reality is like they've already the ones you love and respect have already written off on Burke and Connor. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, yeah. I don't like, know if people know this. You don't have to watch anything you don't like. You know, <laughs> yeah. right. that see, is an option available to you. You, you can, can click press out. exit. You can do what you need to do. You don't need to leave a comment. I, right. just, I, just you don't have to watch. Right. I don't know if it's just because I have never been like obsessed with any. You know, like I was watching videos and making videos that weren't going viral a long mm -hmm. time ago, but I wasn't obsessed with anyone for like ever. Mm -hmm. And so I actually can't wrap my head around writing a comment mm -hmm. that isn't like ha 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 ha. Right. Well, I think a lot of people yeah. develop like parasocial relationships where like they truly believe that they are friends. Mm -hmm. So like, and I also think that, um, I don't know, it makes you like wonder like if the fans don't trust the creator's judgment. Because right. like you Cody and Noel chose you guys. Yeah. Right. So like for people to be skeptical, it's like you they reached like they wanted you, you know? So like please trust Cody and Noel and that right. sort of thing. And then right. trust like Jenna that she wouldn't date an absolute you know mm. lunatic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So wait, was Julian I'm sorry to go backwards now, because I knew we were at Katya and Trixie, but we'll allow it. Yeah. Julian was he a streamer or anything before he started dating Jenna or was that like a I'm actually 100% not sure I don't know. that's such an interesting topic interesting that's an interesting topic as well to talk like people who become famous through their significant others yeah mm -hmm. yeah there is a few ways that people go about that yeah and that some I've seen be so successful and some are sure. a little maybe less successful yeah it's it, a, it's interesting when they break up Yes. As well. That is another interesting piece of the puzzle. And now, what, they're an influencer by, by because proxy. they date yeah. someone yeah. famous? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wild. If yeah. you, I mean, yeah. That's an interesting. You, you do have to have some level of, like, talent or, like, you have to be interesting enough for people to be involved with you. It, it mm -hmm. can't just be, like, right. you know, you are who you are before. But once you get in that scene, also, like, dating apps now, like, aren't as usable mm -hmm. once you're online. So that's another interesting thing. Unusable? It's like, they're not as usable. Yeah. If people are recognizing you, because yeah. so, um, I used to work at Bumble, and my profile, your profile has your, 
job title in it. Mm -hmm. And so like all of my dating apps had, oh, works at Bumble. And I was young. And so I, I had a lot of, and I was in Austin. So I had a lot of UT students being like, hey, like, would love to, like, girls were like, I would love to be a Bumble Honey, which was the intern program or whatever. Like, That's a, that's a cute name, and I will mm -hmm. say I know, that. it is, it is cute, it's but I was like, marker. oh, like, but what about my upper body or my face? <laughs> <laughs> Anything yeah. there, or did you just want an intro to the marketing team? Are we team, rocking with or the goods like, what that are we I'm doing? Then it felt like I'm like, you know, I'm like in this position of power. I'm like, okay, well, you have to go on a date with me, and then I'll, I'll, Ew, send, yeah. I'll, I'll put your resume up at the top for the. Like, Ew, no, very so strange. then I was like, okay, now I can't have my job in here. But then it's like, yeah, what does this person do for work? Mm -hmm. So now it's like, mm -hmm. oh, like you recognize the face from TikTok or like whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, I'm swiping right because I'm unethically clout chasing this mm -hmm. individual. Right. It's like really weird with dating, like. I don't, you don't really date, but like I will go on like dating apps and they will recognize like me from somewhere. How yeah. do you deal with that? I would say like it's not as annoying coming from women. However, where it does get like really kind of gross is like Instagram DMs, which I don't usually mind, but like I'm not like a guy and they very much approach me in like a very desperate way as if I was a guy. Mm. Like I'm like just thinking with my pussy, not, you know, like it's like that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm just thinking with my pussy. But it's like, it, it's like it's this is song. obviously like uncomfortable and you're a woman and I don't want to like do any you, you know I'd rather they not know me but when they don't know me and I'm like I'm a youtuber they're like you're nothing you know yeah they could literally be a barista and they'd be like you're nothing to me but yeah right my experience is um right when the kombucha meme happened I was on dating apps and that was all it was mm -hmm. it was oh no way you're from the meme uh, screenshotted posted on twitter Mm -hmm. You talking about we were talking about on Raya. You uh -huh. can't screenshot profiles. Right. I did not have that luxury or right. that um, affordance to me. So it literally was like my anonymity is gone. My privacy is gone. Mm -hmm. My intimate moments are now b being taken from me. You can't exist, especially as a woman. Like you, you can't exist in this anonymous femininity. Mm -hmm. It was completely taken from me, and yeah, so I, no. I, I, what, like, what oh, are you so early too? That's so sad. early. I've been, been viral for a month. Uh, you're, you're also like an outgoing person, and you're out and about, and you're at bars, and you're doing right. this, and then yeah. it's like, talk about vulnerable, like, right? right. Mm -hmm. Drunk. I mean, yeah. I, you can take it from me too. I've been there. That sucks when people are like, oh my god, you it, fucked it up. Sucks. It's like, yeah, I'm at a bar, not the, not TJ Maxx. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I'm drunk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Drunk and bumbling. I would have also been drunk at DJ Max, so I should bad <laughs> example. But it, it is it is that. It's a very dismal experience and it's a lot of I mean, people are so horny, especially after the pandemic, people are so horny yeah. because we were robbed of yeah. you know being together for so long. But it's you know, talk about oh my god. I used to go on like <laughs> these shows on Comedy Central MTV, just like talk about the weirdest hookup you've had. <laughs> and I'm like, it's been years. Yeah. Because I don't put myself in situations where that would even be a possibility right. because it's I'm hard. scared, right? It's hard yeah. and it's also like, it's a big thing of trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't trust these fucking people. It's a strange thing. Yeah. So it it's, is. no so it's one like, really- what are their motivations? Exactly. And I yeah. never thought, ew, that's so I cringe. know, but it's, it's, it's yeah. I'm a, we're Disney Channel stars. I'm seriously. I, I, I walked into the head of Disney Channel and I said, I want to make history. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for appreciating that. If that fell flat, I would have walked out. I would have walked out. I get it. This is Debbie Ryan for anyone listening. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I mean, it was funny by itself before I knew the reference. Oh, I'm I was glad. Like, it was good. It was good. Like, <laughs> not Debbie Ryan. No. <laughs> I thought people would say that. Okay. Anyway. I do want to move on to yes. I, Keep Cody us on and track, Noel. Sarah. So, Cody and Noel are like two like huge, they, former Viners, now YouTubers. And I don't know if asking you about Cody and Noel is like asking Brittany about the kombucha meme, where it's like something like you are known for, or like is it like a the question gets asked too many times? Yeah, are you so over it, or are, can you, are you down to, to have a little chat? Yeah. So <laughs> Cody and Noel is technically their boss, like the podcast that like owns their podcast, um, their podcast company. Um, but they're tiny meat gang, and so let's just talk about them. I knew I met, I followed both of them on Vine. We we're all like Me mutuals. Too. Yeah. Did you used to follow when Cody and Devin quit their jobs and traveled the world? You uh, remember that? No, I don't think I started watching them till that's cringe. Maybe. T. Mm -hmm. I was later. big I did, Vine. Yeah. Yeah. Big Vine. I knew guy. Cody from Vine. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. Kelsey, I knew I watched her stuff too. Hmm. But. Mm. Yeah. No. I mean, I was like. 
a follower. I always thought yeah. we were the same age, which is really funny. <laughs> like my whole like college experience when I had my four hours on Vine every night, which is incredible the amount of videos I was probably consuming <laughs> that yes. were six seconds when I was – I remember laying – I lived on campus on, at UT uh, freshman year, and it was – I'd get back to my dorm, I'd lay on the ground, and I'd hold my phone over my face and scroll on Vine for hours. And yeah. there was a limited amount of Vines. It I know. wasn't infinite mm-hmm. scrolling right. Which is TikTok. funny. Well, it's it's also really funny because when I, I was I looking at that the other that. day, and mm-hmm. the, some of the people that I thought – that I still like would recognize in public that – Aren't even super famous. Had like two hundred thousand followers. Like it wasn't like we, it, it was carried a, big thing a different weight. It wasn't one hundred and forty right. million followers, right. like Charlie D'Amelio right. type thing. It was it like wasn't as easy to 200, get two hundred thousand followers. Well, yeah. Sarah, when when you passed, you want to talk about that on TikTok? Um, yeah, I had like uh, when Vine died, I lost like eight hundred fifty thousand followers, and then which was so much on vine that yeah was it was lot. it was crazy um so but when i surpassed that i was like holy shit because like you know that yeah it was it was just like weird it, but eight hundred fifty thousand was a lot like it, i was nominated is. for like viner of the year with eight hundred fifty thousand wow yeah. followers you know that's right i mean it is it is a charlie d'amelio level situation now to think about mm-hmm. which is yeah. just crazy it was numbers we had never seen before no. on Vine. Yeah. like no. that many people is actually absurd to think about yeah. and now when i see you know i met someone i was just on her in the car i met someone at vidcon who had like 40 million followers on tiktok and you could just not know who they are it's no wild idea. i don't get it mm-hmm. like mathematically who are these people yeah who are these people someone like charlie someone like um kb is that who just surpassed KB her Lane, yeah um that content doesn't have... I've never even heard of KB. Oh, no, he's he slays. Goes... Well, that's the thing. That content doesn't have words. Dancing doesn't have words. You don't have to be an English speaker to follow mm. these people. Mm. What is limiting, and what I was even more shocked because this person was an English speaker, 40 million people? You know how many mm. fucking people yeah. that is? Well, a lot of those people I figured out, because I literally don't... I know that basically the people in LA, which yeah. is like that's as far as my knowledge goes of like TikTokers. But some of these people, like a lot of the big 40 million people were from Musical.ly. Mm-hmm. And it just carried over. Mm-hmm. And when they got over and they had 100,000 Musical.ly people, they were fed into the feed when it became TikTok, when, every- sure. when the wave of people came on. And so they were in everyone's FYP when FYP started. Mm-hmm. And so people followed them c- because they had followers. Right. Like, like a, uh, famous for being famous. Like a Lauren Gray situation, who's yeah. someone that I didn't know until this year, who has... Really? 70 million or something? Like, she oh, came from OGs. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but I didn't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think about, like, I, it makes sense why, like, there's, like, you have millions on TikTok versus Vine. Because, like, Vine was limited. Like, limiting. You can't, if, um, like, no dancing. Um, you could lip sync songs, but, like, boring. it would be boring and it's six seconds. Um, none of the people, like, it's very hard. It was very hard to be a Viner when you're, like, aesthetic based. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to be aesthetically pleasing on TikTok. And you I can't feel like, quote it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. What The quotable Vines. Mm-hmm. Oh, this dude was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not gonna say like Viners didn't have like more of a talent, but it it was harder to like create something unique in six seconds Succinct, that yeah. wasn't based off of. I mean, there were like hot Viners, but you can't probably rest on that on Vine mm-hmm. yeah. as much as you could now. I was so happy when Cody made his first YouTube videos. I don't know if y'all remember this. Because when Vine died, I was devastated. I was like, I'm never going to hear from these people ever again. Mm -hmm. And then it was the great migration of Uh the Viners to YouTube. And when he posted his first video, it was a minute long. It was him stuttering through it and being like, fuck this, whatever. That was it. And I was like, disappointed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, bad video. And then they just got better and better. Um, Devin, Marcus, Sam, that whole with the vlogs, Uh all of that was just my bread and butter i was obsessed and i was so happy that these people had managed to find another platform and i feel like tiktok was that second chance for a lot of people Mm -hmm. which you know you you say all the time that it gave you a second chance so i am so happy that Mm -hmm. that talent that we thought we had lost from vine has made its way through you know the sewer of the internet that's scary like when we had the scare with TikTok, and this is mm-hmm. this this is, we're basically like a year and a half into like okay, we could do this. So it's it's not even been eighteen months, and you know and we're wild. it's just it's insane. It's happened so fast. Like I'm pretty sure I'll look back and be like, wow, that actually took like an insane toll, toll on yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Like so much happened. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's it's weird because it, so much has changed. 
my in my life like so quickly. But I mean, like to think that like you know we're like people some people I've looked up to for eight whatever years yeah. Yeah. are like my buddies. Like I have their phone numbers and like yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Stupid. And they like we are on their podcast network, but like still I'm like oh I look up to these people so much, but like play it, you know like play mm-hmm. it cool and like we are there. We're like in this in this industry together like yeah. mm-hmm. peers it's a very gratitude thing very grateful it's insane but they are like this duo they're just like the duo of the duo to me yeah and they're like I mentioned like I barely watch the internet but mm-hmm. I watch them and so mm-hmm. because of that I still can barely have a conversation yeah with either of them because I get so nervous every single time it she by the, the way, way cracks both of them up yeah <laughs> like oh I sit totally silent and Brooke will start talking and Cody does his laugh and Noelle is silent I think, laughing, I think they like, feel bad hitting, for me. I think hitting they feel bad his for me. leg. No, it's not it's, that. I'm floundering around them all the time. The other day I was trying to like start a conversation with Cody, and I was just like, so I can guess hold how my... long I can hold my breath underwater for. Uh, Could I, not think of anything we else. Were, we were walking all And he was like, oh, how long? Because he's so nice. <laughs> he's so nice. He was like, So Canadian. And I was like, probably like a minute or something. I, I cannot. It I was, can't do it. It was like speaking. And they're so patient with me and so nice. <laughs> speaking outside. Of the situation, I was right there, and I'm like, I know Brooke has trouble talking to Cody, so I was like, I'm gonna like let, let them have their me time, but if I need to jump in and save the right. thing, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I can basically hold my breath for a while, and I was like, no fucking way. I literally went like this. No, 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 no. no. I like had it's to so turn. Bad. It is so bad. And Cody's like, oh my god, he's so, really? nice. Like, so nice. How long do you think? So like, like Brooke became one of her preschoolers that she used to look yeah. after. It's really like, bad. Yeah, I can hold my breath for a while. And he's <laughs> like, really, that really Brooke, tell me about it. Yeah, like it's a so minute. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes my mom and dad sleep in different beds. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. At least with him, I can get that out. With Noelle, I just stare. And then there's like. Well, Noel is a beautiful man. Well, I even hot. just like he's just so they're so smart too. Mm-hmm. Which By I, the way, they're genius. Noel, his brain is like rotted, awesome. smooth. Mm. Oh, sorry, no, 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 that's how he is, and it's just like I wouldn't have gotten there unless I take shrooms. Right. Mm-hmm. Like my, my brain wouldn't have those neurons would never have crossed paths. Yeah, seen each other. Yeah, met. no. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it works like that. I think they have a dynamic where, like you said, like Cody's a little more goofy. Noel's, I think, but it just like clicks. It they're yeah. like one unit, mm-hmm. and they can go back and forth riffing, mm-hmm. which is just like really makes for the best things. Yeah. Show. The best, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. complimenting men on this podcast. Sorry, I can't ever do I it know. ever again. I think it's really cool. Like, so a lot of these, like, um, <clears throat> duos, like, probably not fallen off, but, like, it's crazy to see, like, I mean, one person maintain longevity, but, like, a mm. duo to be, like, so respected through, like, it's not, like, several generations, mm-hmm. but, like, several generations of the internet. So we're, like, you could experience, like, Cody and Noel, like, early on, like, YouTube, and now yeah. you can experience the podcast. Right, right. And it's the same sort of, like, oomph as, yeah. like, so yeah, you can communicate. How. I don't know how they don't burn out because I make one video every mo- once a month, once a single yeah. video, and I am taking a nap for fourteen hours. Yeah, I so know you're are. not agreeing with that. You cannot relate to the. No, I you're am. pumping out content like it's like it's your job. Like it's Which, all of yeah. our <laughs> jobs. It's fucking tiring it though. Is. It's, it's a balance. Yeah. It's a balancing act, you know. Of and then to also to have a business with. My roommate yeah. and you yeah. know one of my very close friends is like it's um and I'm never here like mm-hmm. I'm yeah. never in LA yeah. I'm always traveling that's stressful uh, but things like that you know where it's a balancing act of what's most important and yeah. so this is very important to both right. of us so right. but I am I, I do enjoy a 14 hour nap I will. yeah I mean minimum mm-hmm. <laughs> like concerning amount of sleep yeah, yeah. medically concerning yes. Yes. Your body, yes. you have to listen to your body. You, you have to. You don't have a choice. Everybody says 14 hours. I fell asleep in the middle of taking my socks off yesterday, and I woke up with one sock in my hand and the other on my foot. Because I just you couldn't even. Google for narcolepsy? No, I don't think I have narcolepsy. She has an iron deficiency, and no, she's I refusing don't. I to No, I don't. I think I'm just depressed. It. Your, Truly. Is your vision kind of foggy? Fog no. Okay. Can you, feel your, Fair. can you feel your hands and feet? Yeah. Do okay. they get numb? I've gotten all these blood tests and everything. I'm compl- healthy as a horse. Uh-huh. I used to have this fear when I was a kid that when you would get blood tests done, it was vampires. Oh, mm-hmm. like like genuinely, I thought they were taking all my uh-huh. blood and like doing something with it, like 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So like a vampire is like swishing it in their mouth, like a sommelier. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah, I was, she does uh, have literally you know, l- iron like deficiency. A really good video idea for you. Vampire <laughs> sommelier. Yeah. Thanks. Free guys. idea. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> I'll remember it. Um, but yeah, so they've stood the test. I, do you want to touch on a couple more, like who have? I want to talk on some of the unconventional duos. So we do have a list of unconventional duos, and they're unconventional in that they don't like each other. Or they're not actually duos, but they're commonly associated uh-huh. with each right. other. Interesting. So we, um, Drew Gooden and Danny Gonzalez. Love them. Are not duo, like they're not a pair, but they are commonly associated with each other and they do collab a lot. And they are the same person. Mm-hmm. And I are, do actually yeah. get them confused and I follow them both on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And That's when they pop up, I get. Isn't there not a code of honor amongst funny white men? What? How do you mean? <laughs> no, unless our dads are NBC execs, <laughs> we're not going to make it to in, in SNL anyway. Fair, 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 fair. I finally got to meet Danny at VidCon. Kind of fingered a little bit. And oh, he came up to me. He came up to me. You know, That's I thought you said kind feeling. of fingered a little I bit. Too, and I was like, what are we? I didn't do that. <laughs> He's married. He's married. Yeah, Shut I would up. never. So. But isn't it crazy? Like, all the Vine kids are, like, doing pretty well. Yeah, go Both for Both Drew them. and Danny are from Vine. Yeah. But it's, yeah. they establish their niche. They are commentary Comedic commentary channels, but which is always going to be a market. For the that. thing, um, Drew didn't make his like you know the when Vine ended, he mm-hmm. didn't initially get on like YouTube. I remember going to um, like the Shorty Awards with him, and he was like, "I guess I'm going back to like my job." Wow! And so I'm walking around with him and his That's wife. That's scary. And literally a couple months later, he blows up on YouTube. Good for him. Yeah, I so gotta get on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You do. All right, I gotta get married. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Trophy wife, or no, a uh, uh, breadwinner wife. Yeah. yeah. You give, I'm stay at home, Dad. Dang, oh. <laughs> <laughs> cannot trust that enough. I cannot go back to the office. <laughs> I cannot. Woo. Gives me a heart murmur. We also have a Shane and Jeffrey. Oh, I'm talking about Shane and Jeffrey for so long. So here's the thing. Um, Holy fuck. Shane and Jeffrey are not a pair. Like, they mm-hmm. have no official dueling. Mm. But, like, they did a series together, and they're both problematic. Yes. yes. So, like, it made, and it was a captivating series, mm. but they're, I feel like a lot was, like, hate watch and genuine I- intrigue. You it know what I mean? It was like, what the fuck are they going to do next? I yeah. I cannot, still to this day, believe that all of that happened. Mm-hmm. I just, it was so much all at once. And what so many did, problematic people. What did happen? Would you be, I... Well, I know what happened with Shane, but what happened... They're just the most problematic people, and they paired up together and made a makeup palette. Yeah, of course. And uh, as they do, as, you know, as one, one does. One, and yes. um, They broke it, it into like a five-part series. And it was it like was, hour long. It was yeah. just the most absurd thing of like, Shane made this video series called The Wonderful Life of Jeffree Star or something like that. And then True. they talked, like it was just how rich Jeffree is and yeah. how many business ventures he has. And Shane the whole time being like, oh my God, Jeffree. Oh my god! Like, cause he's so rich. Like Shane Dawson isn't also one right. of the richest YouTubers yeah. ever. Yeah, wearing shirts with holes in it and like acting like he's poor. Shut the fuck up. Right. Yeah. Like these people have so much money, and it was just such. It was an entry. Yeah. It was like, I can't believe this is real. It's a piece mm-hmm. of media I'm consuming. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, the exposés that he did on, or honestly, redemption arcs that he did for Tana Mojo, mm-hmm. Jake Paul, mm-hmm. Jeffrey Star, whoever the uh, Eugene Cooney. Yeah. All these like. You know, people who have had their eras have come and gone who, for some reason, he felt needed redemption. And they got it because mm-hmm. of his expose, wow. documentary, wow. whatever That's he did. Yeah. It was just the most wild era of YouTube. What, yeah. four years ago? Yeah, probably. That's I'm, strange. I have to say, I actually, like, I don't know what reason I'm watching Jeffree Star's Discover page on Snapchat. <laughs> But like it's hard to look away. The one know, with the the farm with the yak. Yeah, he's got yeah, a yeah. yak farm. Yeah. Bitch. Dude, but he, I did he, consume that. Content. He was raising yaks, and everyone's like, "Oh, he has like Sweet. pets now." Yeah, he's killing he's them, murdering for their them. Meat. And, oh yeah. yeah, he's selling yak jerky. That is so. I have to. Not a joke. Mm. I guess like I can't speak because I don't eat give it meat, to him. But like there was something him. about no. how close he was with the yaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Naming and now them. that he's that, selling them, it's not sitting right. It's interesting as a business person. I'm not saying I'm one, but. It's interesting the way that you convince yourself. It's like, oh, this is lucrative. So they're not my pets anymore because I have too many. I'm gonna right. kill the ones that mm-hmm. I don't. I haven't met yet. We got teriyaki jerky. We but got the, sesame and vinegar. The yeah. way that he's uh, justifying it is he's like, there's no preservatives in this yak meat. It's one of the <laughs> it's one of the healthiest yak meat. So I'm just providing back to the town that I'm living in. And it's like, well, you live there because of 
Remember you are like blacklisted in LA? Yeah. Right. So, Remember you're a billionaire who bought this land? Yeah. You ever been to like Lush, like the store? Uh-huh. Yeah. Where they always say who made? You yeah. know, the like yeah. the Lush yes, products, yes. but this time you get the name of the yak. This was uh, Anthony. <laughs> it's so And then you get sad. like a little headshot of Anthony. No, I, I can't, I cannot <laughs> lie to you. You want to eat like it? That's like very, a real thing in Texas. Like, yes, yes. Like I have eaten cows that You could say knew. their name. Yeah, we eat Bevo, who's our mascot. Yeah. We eat him at when he's of age today. Slay. Bevo? Literally, we slay, slay. him. See, yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to do that. Bevo the story is, of is Bevo. the longhorn that is our mascot at UT Austin. Yeah. And would you like to tell the story of how we, they got the name Bevo? No, I don't know it. You don't know it? No. So Little Miss Giggum knows it. I, I do know it. Um, Texas A&M, Texas University, were rivals, still are. Um, we snuck over to Austin one night. We, like I was there branded their cattle their or their longhorn their mascot with the score of the game that we just beat them in 13-0 a real 13-0, animal 13-0 a real animal branded them 13-0 they saw it the next morning um put a horseshoe over it as another branding spelled bevo that and that's how yeah just truly awful the horse oh. is like oh my god what, I, or <laughs> what did i the, do for yeah, yeah. the cow yeah. was like oh, god damn it shit <laughs> <laughs> about football yeah ah! <laughs> it was um that's the story of that's bevo. crazy so wow. y'all made it your own because we decided to mutilate an animal that belonged yeah. to you damn yeah really well, great we, story i love traditions we ate yeah. him you guys are really glad to know that you guys just we ended consumed. up just eating him I mean, I say we. We. I. I've never had the privilege of eating our mascot. Right. Mm. Do you guys? You don't eat your dog. We don't eat the dog. We don't okay. eat Revly. Yeah, it's okay. Met him one time. Revly? Mm-hmm. It's a girl. So. Met her one time. <laughs> I think. Um, Not me misgendering the A and M mascot. L- no, me. no worries at all. I think it's so interesting to think of back to Jeffrey Star, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, him. <laughs> in his town what Wyoming is he in Wyoming yeah yeah. just at the local farmer's market like well it's honest work we're out here we got him for all day all year he, wild he takes him it to Tractor Supply Co and takes him inside I just want to know how many people in this town are like like we're what? gonna like Get kill you out. yeah like we hate you so much Get out yeah mm. you have ruined the economy of this yeah 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 and well jack i think he's in jackson hole which is where kanye west has a place ah. well there was the whole rumor about them hooking up right which Remember i still can't that. wrap my head around yeah. um, oh twitter that day was so fun that was so funny. fun i really thought jeffrey handled that really well yeah i don't know i don't know that much about jeffrey like og jeffrey Sounds i'm just like you do <laughs> i just know him from this like new thing he, on, on snapchat discovery page yeah. oh like snapchat loves to highlight jeffrey star yeah. i always keep it i'm like oh yeah he exists yeah, it's, it's just it's like watching a train wreck. Like it's 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 horrible, but like you can't <clears throat> look away. Like I just like need to see what happens. Yeah. Mm. We're also gonna touch on a couple more unconventional duos, like Frenemies, which is Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas. They, uh, I think they started off disliking each other. Is they were they are two very very strong personalities that were not afraid to disagree with each other. And so a lot of people watched it because, like, as their name would suggest, friend, enemies, mm-hmm. like frenemies. Yeah, do you want to talk about train wreck? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was very much night and day and not in, like, a, not like in an endearing way. It was, like, yeah, kind of a train wreck, I yeah. believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's why it worked is because it was a type of duo that you've never seen before. Right. Incredibly successful, incredibly entertaining. Yeah. We were all locked inside. Right. We wanted to see them. Mm-hmm. When did this that? Fight? So it started during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Shut up. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I think of Ethan Klein, obviously, and Trisha Paytas, but mostly Ethan Klein is like longevity, like very cool, very put together, H3 and for really yeah. great. Well, he's been around forever doing other things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I just didn't realize the podcast wasn't like an OG YouTube podcast. No. no. Frenemies was, it started and ended during the pandemic. Wow. Yeah. That was really fun. Well, it's because crazy. they know each other because Yella's brother is, is, Mo, Yella's brother is Moses. Yes. Right? Yes. They Whoa. Are oh my God. Whoa. They are Holy married. So they're, yes. Yeah. So they're siblings in laws, kind of, <laughs> by well, association. That's, if it could get any like mess here. Yeah. It's actually really sad. They don't yeah, really that's talk tragic. anymore yeah. or anything. It's very sad. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. I do want to talk about Elijah and Christine. So another unconventional duo for like everyone. So there's Christine Sidelko and Elijah Daniel. And they were an unusual duo. Um, they're, again, very, very strong personalities. Like, I mean, like, very strong personalities. Yeah. Like uh, Elijah Daniel got a tattoo of Donald Trump sucking a dick on his 
leg. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christine Sidelko, like, just so fucking funny, like, blew up. Mary Chrysler, like, that meme was her. And they were just, like, the they they worked, you know, in the beginning because, mm-hmm. like, they were just so polarizing, but they eventually, like, fell out is why, you know. Which is always sad and very interesting to talk about when these duos end up hating each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they fight mm-hmm. or they date and it goes wrong or... It's something that happens behind the scenes and then they never address it. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, whatever happened to da-da-da? That's literally what it becomes. People find out, too. Oh, it comes out to yeah. like, anyway, yeah. when that person three years later is like, damn, I need a YouTube video idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should bring up this old drama. Ooh. Very interesting. Thank you, Cal. It's kind of hurting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly. Let me do a tell-all. Yeah. I love well, it. I think a lot of, like, of the, you know, duos that work, like, um, you know, Rhett and Link, there's a give and take, you know, like where you can, like you say something you disagree with, the other person's like, I can see where you're coming from that. Yeah. These three, like, groups uh, would absolutely, like, not humor each other, yeah. like, if they disagreed on something. And I feel like that could quickly turn volatile off scene, yeah. like, out, off camera. And that's probably, like, what caused their demise. But it also was very entertaining, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. people are very nostalgic for that era, too, because that was peak Vine. Mm-hmm. Right. It was right after Vine too, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Elijah was on TikTok for a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got pretty yeah. involved with yeah, Elijah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. What happened? Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> um, I mean, I, it was honestly a while about a while back, a while back now. But like, he was going to start a reality show at TikTokers, and I didn't know anybody Holy on TikTok. Holy fuck! I remember that. Remember yeah. that? Oh yeah. Oh I my can't god! But I still don't know if it, it was real. Sally Dar was in it. Emmy and Ian were supposed to be in it. Yeah, I mean, that's how I became mutuals with Emmy and Ian because uh-huh. we were all in a group text to plan this the failed house. show. <laughs> Claudia Conway. Claudia Conway oh, was one of the big god. ones. But she's literally seventeen. I know. It was a Slay. weird. It was it interesting. Really, yeah. It was really interesting, but there was a brand that was involved, and it, uh, then it just never happened, and I have not heard from Elijah since. Wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very wild. Um, and then, of course, hope he's okay. to wrap up the final unconventional duos, which kind of started it all, I would say the Vlogbrothers, John and Hank. I went to VidCon just so I would see them, and then I saw both of them and did not say a word. Yeah. But here's the thing. They're an unconventional duo. because They are brothers, but, like, um, they don't actually... I mean, they do collab, but, like, that's not what they're known for. Like, Cody right. and Noel mm-hmm. are known for being together. They're also not comedic. A lot of these are f- comedic duos. Right. Yeah, so they're, like, very much educational content. Um, but, yeah, they, they started, like, VidCon, and they were, like, the OG, like, YouTubers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they are an unconventional duo, but they are related. They got me through... AP classes in high school. Uh-huh. Uh, it's just so fascinating. They do everything. That mm-hmm. I never had heard of Hank Green. That's what? like the only person I've ever heard of. Yeah. I never, I don't know. I never, I've never heard of him. Until what, TikTok? Until Brooke. <gasps> Crazy, Wow. Huh? Yeah. Um, I knew John Green because of. The books. Uh, the Fault in Our Stars. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I knew John Green's name, mm-hmm. but I didn't know. Never would I have guessed that Hank and John were related in two separate fields. <laughs> mm-hmm. and There's both a lot of people who think six, they're the same person. Successful yeah. I mean, in two the separate fields brother, and together. The right. third brother, CeeLo. Green? <laughs> good yeah. point. CeeLo Green. Thank oh, you for no, see, that was raising a good awareness yeah. for that. Sarah, we like yeah. to squeeze him in. <laughs> oh my God, I love his work. Mm-hmm. I really think that the Vlogbrothers, VidCon aside, I mean, creating that monolith mm-hmm. of no this Paramount whole... owns it now? VidCon? I th- I th- someone just bought it. I Viacom it was bought it and then Viacom Paramount. Paramount, yeah. Now that makes sense why Paramount Plus was there. In a big way. <laughs> I was in the press room and they were like, Paramount Plus, a few questions. What's your favorite show on Paramount Plus? SpongeBob is the only one I know, by the way. <laughs> so I'm going to say SpongeBob. Love you guys. Uh, well, you've just sold me on Paramount Plus. Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know I think that. I only know the iCarly I, reboot. You, <laughs> it's on Paramount? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Well, we, no, were on, tell you. we were on our podcast the other day, and I was like, yeah, unfortunately, it's on Peacock. Fuck you, Peacock. And then, like, I'm like, I just shot myself in the foot for a yeah. brand deal in the yeah. future. Mm-hmm. Can't Sorry. take that one back. Sorry. Um, Where did you say that on? On our podcast. Oh, shit. Well, I was just, like, really annoyed because I had to – there was actually no other options. And I pay for everything else, so nothing against Peacock except, like, everything because, fuck, like, it's – there's nothing else on it except what, the show I wanted to watch. That's so annoying. Mm-hmm. Do you watch Yellowstone? No, because I can't watch Dark – Anything dark because I have to chase it at the end with hey, like always sunny or growing like, up. 
Uh, have I you like grown I live, up? I live alone, so it's like I, I well, need. Well, like Yellowstone's scary. It's not scary. Is it about like national parks? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. about what, um, what um, It's about uh, well, it's got what's his name in it. To- oh my Kevin god, CeeLo uh, Green. <laughs> Kevin, yeah, CeeLo Green and uh, Kevin Costner. I was gonna say that bear that prevents forest fires. Smokey the Bear. Yeah, Smokey cause... Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Smokey Robinson. And um, Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, is actually in it. Stuck Only in the you forest. Can prevent moon landings. Mm-hmm. It um, wasn't real. It didn't actually happen, by the way. What? The moon landing. Oh, don't don't get him started. Yeah, I met a girl this weekend. She convinced she me really it was fake, and so that's what I'm. On, that's my on, new on, thing. On. What was her What was her reasoning that it was fake? Uh, I cannot remember. I was so drunk. Hey, it sounds like it struck you though. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only part I remember is that she was like, "No, cord. it's not real." And I was like, "I totally believe you." <laughs> so this has been oh, um, great way to end the, <laughs> in the duo talk. Yes, the landing did not happen. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you to Brooke and Connor. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us. Legends, guys. love you guys so much. We love you. Please check out their podcast. Um, Brooke and Connor make a podcast. Yes. Mm-hmm. Really, uh, BNC MAP. Nice book mm-hmm. map. And we love you guys, and thank you for listening. And yes, we're going on tour, and yes, that's happening. And it's me and Sarah. And this has been violating community, community guidelines. guidelines. Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Pop music, podcasts. you know Please where to like find and us. Subscribe. Love you. All right, bye guys. Come bye on. guys.